morning everyone uh, at the very beginning uh, on behalf of the department of economics we express our uh, uh, sorry that we are sorry that the program is uh, late due to some technical problem but we are going to start the program now uh, respected uh, principal sir uh, dr vivas dev uh, today's resource person dr bhavesh hadorika national institute of public finance and policy uh, new delhi our uh, departmental head dr ruma pal uh, faculty members and research scholars from different colleges and universities and my dear student participants. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. I am Zitu Soikya, and on behalf of the Department of Economics, Busan College, Silsor, I will be responsible for hosting the presentation today. We are glad to welcome you all in today's lecture program on Union Budget 2022-23. Uh, moreover, our resource person, Dr. Bhavesh Hadorika, also provides some information on career opportunities available to the students who are pursuing higher education in the subject of economics in different institutions. So, at the very beginning, may I request to our uh, uh, head, Dr. Rumapal, to deliver the welcome address of today's program. <coughs> Over to you, madam. Respected Principal, Vice Principal, IQC Coordinator, our guest speaker, colleagues, my very dear students, and all participants. Good morning to you all. I thank each one of you for your valued participation and joining this live session on time. I welcome you all to this presentation of Budget 2000. 21-22. On behalf of the Department of Economics, I, Dr. Ruma Pal, head of the department, welcome you all to this national webinar on Union Budget 2022-23. I appreciate the cooperation of the principal, Dr. Bibhash Dev, and IQSC coordinator, Dr. Rajeshri Pal, in this regard. Pandemic situation has exposed us to a new medium of con conversation and interaction and I suppose this has set a wider re reachability among the audience. We take this opportunity to utilize this platform and conduct this webinar for all of us to understand and participate. We are very fortunate and honored to have with us Dr. an eminent speaker, Dr. Bhavish Hazarika from the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy in New Delhi, who will throw light on today's topic. I sincerely thank you, Dr. Hazarika, to have accepted our invitation in spite of your busy schedule. The union budget means different things to different people. To many, it is an imposition of new taxes, revision of prices, or balancing home budget. However, for academicians, administrators, policymakers, it exemplifies 
a different perspective as regards allocation of funds, inclusion of technologies, changes and upgradation of existing structures through tax, monetary and fiscal reforms. This is a visionary budget, no doubt, of Modi government and second digital budget in the light of the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak. We are optimistic of the future of a country with changes with changing macroeconomic growth and micro inclusive welfare policies. So while the present budget has made various allocation in different sectors and has also addressed the challenges faced by the economy, effective implementation of the budget will definitely will be the key to its success. Thank you. Thank you once again to our eminent speaker. Thank you, Dr. Hazarika. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for your welcome address. Now, moving towards our technical session. Now, we are going to start the technical session on Union Budget 2022-23. But before starting uh, the presentation, may I request to our uh, departmental colleague, uh, Rana Vijay Das, uh, for, to read out the brief profile of the resource person. So, it's not working. So, okay, fine. So, thank, thank you, Jitu. So, it's my pleasure to introduce before you a brief profile of today's speaker, who is none but Dr. Bhavesh Hajarika, an eminent economist at the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy. New Delhi. Dr. Hajarika has completed his master's degree in economics from Gauhati University and received PhD degree from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kodakpur. His research areas are public policy, public finance management, development economics, economics of choice decision and entrepreneurship. He has published his research papers in peer reviewed national and international journals. Apart from the journal publication, Dr. Hajarika has a good number of publications as working papers and chapters in edited books. Dr. Hajarika has also presented his research papers in different national and international seminars and conferences. His presentation in abroad include countries like USA, Canada, Nepal, Bhutan, etc. Dr. Hajarika is also a member of various professional associations, including International Association for Research in Income and Wealth, Southern Economic Association, Indian Society for Ecological Economics, etc. He is also a referee of a couple of international journals and conferences. His current research areas include public policy, impact evaluation, and public expenditure management. So this is the rich profile of our today's speaker, Dr. Ajarika, and uh, we are very much eager to hear you, sir. Thank you. Um, did you have uh, more slide as an option? Can you upload the slides? Oh, fine. First of all, uh, thank you, IQSC uh, Guru Sharan College, for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this uh, program. I am extremely honored uh, to be here. A very uh, warm wishes to the HOD, uh, Dr. Paul, uh, Dr. faculty members, the IQ uh, coordinator, students, and the other dignitaries uh, present today in this webinar. Uh, before starting my uh, talk, I would like to request all of you uh, you, you can stop me whenever you want to elaborate me if you find any technical uh, concept, uh, if you want me to elaborate on that particular point. Uh, let's, uh, my presentation or my talks basically follows. First, I'll be giving some sort of uh, uh, 
a, a kind of overview on the macro fiscal positions, what the budget has outlined uh, for 2022-23. And then I'll be giving uh, some sort of snapshot on the composition expenditure across the different sector. Then I will give some more time on, on explaining the social sector allocation, especially in education health, and also uh, some sort of uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, program that the government of India uh, emphasizes in, in protecting the, uh, basically those the people in the uh, vulnerable groups. And after the end of my talk, uh, I'll be uh, try to uh, give some sort of tips or rather I can say some sort of uh, career options what are basically exist in uh, public policy space, uh, sphere. Uh, it's, it's not that uh, only the students from the economics background, they can apply into this kind of career options, but other, other uh, students from other disciplines also can uh, explore those uh, career options in the public policy sphere. Uh, Okay, so uh, before going into the details of macro fiscal uh, positions, what are the key budget proposals that uh, our FM has emphasized in 2020-23 uh, uh, budget? First of all, the, uh, we have seen a sharp increase in the public investment and capital expenditure. Another uh, budget proposal is on providing greater fiscal space to states to uh, uh, to to, to invest in the state activities, especially when we see a kind of uh, uh, extension in, in their uh, fiscal deficit targets by 0.5%. Then we have this extension of uh, productive link incentive schemes for different uh, sectors, say for example, uh, textile, then agro-processing, then manufacturing sector, uh, especially in, in uh, um, what are the other are basically the auto sales so the government is extending the PLA schemes for those sectors then we are going to uh, introduce a digital rupee uh, which will be using a kind of blockchain uh, technology uh, i think we have uh, heard about this technology when we talk about the bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies uh, we are going to tax the digital assets, just a one new avenue for the governments to, to, to raise the uh, revenue. And then one more important announcement for uh, reservation of defense procurement, especially from the domestic sector. And there is also a kind of uh, push up to, towards the startup. Basically, we are going to uh, set up a uh, blended capital fund so that we uh, give a kind of boost in the uh, rural uh, farm produce value chain. So these are the kind of key budget proposals that FM has emphasized in the current budget. Uh, for me, uh, basically, when I first um, gone through the budget speech, what I feel that this particular budget, this 2020 uh, budget, has attempted to make a balance between the near-term growth imperatives and the long-term goal uh, priorities, the growth priorities, basically. And if you see in this direction, uh, FM has emphasized a big push uh, towards the infrastructure and logistics, especially in the name of PM Gotisakti. And at the same time, it aims to create 60 lakh jobs through the PLI schemes into different sectors, as I already uh, mentioned. And if you see this kind of results, basically the kind of growth as well as the job creations, so it focuses purely on four pillars, productivity, climate actions, then financing investment, and the PM Gati Sakti, of course. And it basically has led a roadmap for economic re uh, revival when we are facing a kind of uh, contraction in the economy uh, because of pandemic and all those things. So it's it try to uh, basically give a kind of balanced approach. And I am very much uh, pleased that given there are kind of uh, elections are coming, uh, say, for example, in UP as well as in Punjab, see, CC avoided those kind of obviously election oriented uh, 
populist with Mizar. So I, I'm very much happy in this division. Uh, if you compare with the, some of the other uh, previous uh, budget uh, speech. So coming to a kind of macro position of the country, why we have to give a kind of importance to understand these macro variables, specifically the uh, its economic size, because in budgetary practices, the anticipated size of the economy has implications for the revenue. Or rather, we can say that if we have a kind of higher growth trend, then we will be having a kind of better space, fiscal space to finance our activities, to finance the government activities. Uh, if you see the budget uh, this time, they have projected a kind of uh, growth rate, nominal growth rate is 11 percent. So it basically shows that the union, uh, union budget basically shows that the COVID in this fiscal risk uh, is much more less pronounced now as compared to what was there in 2020-21. Uh, we do not have a kind of post-COVID uh, medium term growth projection. Uh, if you see uh, kind of we are not saying much about how we are going to uh, perform in the in terms of fiscal consolidation or especially in the in terms of borrowings so i'll come to that point maybe a little bit later time uh, if we see this particular number this 11.1 percent it's a little bit of conservative for to me because in last year while we have projected something around 13 percent we achieved 17.6 uh, percent that's why we have the second uh, covid web now the situation have uh, kind of uh, in a better better place and we if we see the kind of speed of vaccination and all those and we are not seeing a kind of uh, lockdown or maybe a kind of uh, regional lockdowns in the coming uh, fiscal so i think this number is a little bit of conservative and if you see uh the economic survey they are also going giving us a real gdp growth of something around eight to eight point five percent if you uh know if you see we have currently the inflation uh, number something around six percent so this number and the real number given by the uh, economic survey there is a disconnect so i hope given this if you see the kind of high frequency numbers in terms of uh, GST collections, then export growth, auto sales. So those are basically giving us a kind of more better or kind of much better growth than anticipated. And I'm optimistic that this number, basically we are going to achieve and we are going to surpass this number. Let's see uh, what happened to the growth scenarios so uh, if you see if you compare the 21 22 numbers across the supply set sectors basically when we uh, go we, when we when we uh, see the economic growth or maybe we can see the gsdp number sorry gdp number so this can be seen as a kind of uh, income approach so during the first uh, period after COVID. So agriculture, mining, then utility services, something like electricity then others. So those sectors were resilient. Those sectors were not hampered much because of COVID, but the other sectors, specifically the trade hotels and hospitality, then manufacturing and other sectors, they, they, they uh, got a heat. And the highest heat was in, in the trade, hotel, and uh, hospitality sector, basically the tourism sector. But if you see the last year, basically 21, 22, we have seen a kind of revival in the economy across all the sectors. But we see the trade, there's a concern regarding the sector of trade, hotels, and hospitality. So we basically looking for some sort of measures to uh, boost this sector. And I think in budget speech also, FM has mentioned to extend the PLI schemes, especially for tourism and related uh, MSMEs. Uh, 
let's look at the demand side. Okay, so in demand side, uh, we have, I think so, I, I missed this slide, the earlier slide, slide is not coming up, yeah, okay. I missed this one. Okay. Anyway, so basically concerns remain about the private consumptions. If we see the other side, government consumption, of course, it has increased because of the kind of push given by the government in the 2021 budget as well as 21-22 budget. So we have seen a lot of returns into the government investment, but the concern remains still with the private consumption. And when we people are looking at uh, some sort of uh, uh, tax uh, benefits, especially for the middle class, which basically give a boost to the uh, consumption sector, but yet we are uh, three percentage points short as compared to the pre-COVID uh, period. Um, now let's see some sort of uh, fiscal variables, especially if you see the revenue receipts, we have something around uh, 20, we have targeted to receive something around 22 lakh crores for 2021, which is a kind of 6% six increase as compared to 21-22 uh, reverse estimate. And accordingly, uh, in in that particular revenue receipt, we can, we can see a kind of charge in the tax revenue it was around 23% uh, in the last year, and we are proposing to accept something around 9.6%. Here, what we can say, given the uh, performance of the economy and a little bit of easiness in the, the economic activities, because we now are kind of resilient to the COVID, uh, uh, COVID situation. So we are, I am optimistic that this number can be easily achieved. And in fact, what is missing here, or what rather I could say, that this number a little bit of conservative. Uh, maybe government has some other ideas uh, when they will uh, realize the actual number. Maybe they are going to increase some more allocation uh, into different heads, or maybe they are trying to see or uh, in the fiscal consolidation part. What basically the fiscal consolidation means, basically we are trying to trying to reduce our stress on borrowing. We are trying to uh, reduce the uh, borrowing or debt positions of the country. In terms of total expenditure, yes, we have seen a kind of drop. Uh, 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 no, we we have, we are uh, yeah we are seeing a kind of uh, reduction in the growth rate as compared to what we have uh, seen in the last year. In last year, uh, we have witnessed 7.4 percent increase as compared to 2021. 20, uh, but this year, we are not seeing that kind of pace in 2022-23, which basically constrained by the conservative GDP, num GDP numbers as well as conservative uh, revenue receipt projection by the uh, central government. But what is interesting here to look into the interest component, as I already told you that we as a government, uh, we are taking uh, various measures to uh, speed up our expenditure. But for that, we are financing uh, through borrowing and other, other asset management uh, schemes for which we need to pay. Now, if you see the number, the growth in the interest payment, it's, it's alarming. We have this nine, almost 20% increase in the uh, interest component, what we're paying uh, in lieu of uh, getting the uh, money for investment purpose. Not only investment, we are also using those uh, money what we are borrowing for consumption purposes. So. For this year, we are again projecting something around 16%. So this is a kind of alarming situation. Uh, and, but the positive note, what we are seeing here, we are getting a kind of increased allocation under capital expenditure. 
this is a kind of very uh, welcome uh, step from the governments to move forward uh, towards asset creation because we know that in order to achieve a kind of long term economic growth we or we can say if we uh, yes, we have to accept some sort of sustainable uh, growth projections over the years we need to create the assets so i think this is a welcome stage to uh, stress uh, more on the capital uh, aspect uh, let's let let's see what what the government has proposed under this capital uh, expenditure front okay so uh, as i already mentioned that this is the second year budget they, they, they this is basically giving emphasis more on capital expenditure as we know that uh, if you come if you know the concept of multiplier what basically it means that when we are spending some money what we're getting in return to that in terms of increasing the G, uh, gdp number so that's basically giving you a kind of uh, multiplier effect so uh, the rationale behind an increase in the uh, capital expenditure is the higher multiplier associated with the capital expenditure there are several studies including our uh, one of our colleagues he has he had done something on that and also the rbi report they are saying that uh, the multiplier effect of capital expenditure is much, much higher as compared to the revenue expenditure. That's why we need to move forward. We need to give more emphasis on, on capital expenditure if we uh, really want to have more returns from our investment. Uh, if you see uh, the budget 2021 uh, basically runs uh, through the PM Godisakti to boost infrastructure, digital economy, okay so basically by emphasizing in this area what they are trying to do they are trying to uh, target a kind of higher growth in the coming years as well as creation of quality jobs rather than creation of jobs which basically act as a safety net government is trying to uh, generate some sort of jobs which are quality in nature or maybe a sustainable in nature so an increase in the capital expenditure in, in budgetary uh, front is necessitated because we have a kind of fragile state of private investment in the country because of COVID. So focus on, on, on increase in the capital expenditure is indeed a good uh, thing for enhancing uh, productive capacity uh, of the country. Uh, by doing so, what government is uh, trying to see, they are trying to basically giving more focus, more focus on on, uh, on creation of assets through investment in national highways, railways, telecommunications, domestic defense procurement. So those are the areas they are uh, primarily attempting or rather they are trying to, uh, they are focusing in generating uh, uh, kind of skilled uh, jobs. However, in realizing the growth imperatives, uh, especially from the uh, capital uh, expenditure from the role of state government is very, very important. As we know that around two thirds of the capital expenditure is basically uh, implemented by the states. So uh, it's very important to understand what the kind of capacity and what kind of efficiency that the states are achieving in terms of uh, spending this money so another important uh, move in this direction uh, apart from using the uh, using the fiscal deficit number basically uh, this uh, union government is allowing uh, the states to borrow four percent four percent as which is 0.5 percent uh, higher than what was uh, given uh, as, as, as as in target as a 3.5 percent so that 4.5 percent will give the boost and apart from that government is also uh, 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 making an announcement of giving one lakh crore as a conditional grant so not sorry sorry it's not a grant it's a conditional loan so to me actually when uh, i think in 21 22 uh, there were several states they have 
mentioned to have revenue deficits. So in that case, again, relying on more borrowings, more loan facilities uh, would not be feasible for many states. So I would rather see these could have been more uh, uh, be uh, beneficial uh, if this uh, loan facility comes in terms of conditional grant in instead of loan. So I think uh, this might be because government has some reservation in their revenue projections. So that is one issues, and I think I think I think we need to look into that perspective. Maybe when we are going to realize some higher uh, revenue uh, in 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 when the uh, when the time goes on, I think the union government they need to uh, focus, shift their focus to to increase the conditional grant. Might be because might be it should be kept as a conditional uh, as this now this money should be used in the, uh, in the in the asset creation only for asset creation and not going for uh, financing the revenue deficit so this should be priority but i think that particular thing uh, the government should uh, look into that perspective if they have some more revenue in um, coming days Yeah, so as I already mentioned that uh, states has a role to play and that efficiency of spending is going to play a major role in this uh, juncture. Let, let's let's us discuss something about debt deficits. Uh, if you see, uh, we have projected something around 3.9% revenue deficit this year and 6.44% of GDP as our fiscal deficits. So around half of the borrowings, what we are going to have is going to finance the revenue deficits. So this is an alarming note. And in revenue deficit, if you see the, the, the share of interest payment, it's very, very high. So it basically have a kind of implications uh, uh implication in 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 terms of fiscal space available to our uh, government uh if you see we do have some sort of reservation when we talk about the uh, tax revenue because tax basically grows at a very slow rate and there is also a kind of political aspect when uh, when polit social political aspect because when you raise the tax then basically the direct tax then there is direct effect on your consumption level and another one when you're going to increase the corporate tax then there is a kind of uh, disincentives to uh, the private sector to invest so those are the complications comes when we target uh, target target the Tax in uh, target target the uh, revenue fulfilled through increasing uh, direct tax. So what lies here? How can we uh, how can we uh, reduce those debt deficits uh, issues? Once we what we can target that increase in non revenue uh, sorry non tax revenue. Now if you uh, you all ever that government is trying to have a national uh, investment pipeline and then we are also doing some sort of disinvestment activities so those are the kind of uh, non-tax revenue that government is trying to see and apart in addition to that what i feel that we need to look into a kind of efficiency gain uh, what when we are trying to uh, get our borrowings we should also look into kind of effective interest rate that we are paying uh, for these borrowings and what other things what we can see say for example when there is a kind of available of foreign capital although we the, the rate of interest of those uh, external borrowing is low but it's very risky for for a kind of sovereignty uh, in in sense because you already we already have a kind of example of Greece what they faced uh, that they, they gun bail out so it's very risky if we have a kind of higher share of external borrowing in our total uh, uh, 
uh, borrowing numbers. So I think what we can do, what we can take some measures to uh, to, to uh, engage the private sector because they do have this capability, and we also out uh, will be free of the risk of foreign uh, external borrowing. So I think what we can do, we can encourage the private sector to invest uh, through centralizing the uh, external borrowings uh, through through this private sector. Uh, fiscal deficits, we have targeted to be something around 6.5% this year, uh, which is about 4.4% increase as compared to the last, last year. So in absolute terms, it's something around 16.61 lakh crores. So the increase in the size of the absolute deficit, uh, fiscal deficit is basically uh, what we have seen uh, induced by the increase in the capital spending as much as we have something around 24% increase in the capital uh, expenditure. So towards financing this uh, fiscal deficits, what we are eyeing at, we are eyeing at borrowing something around 11 lakh crores through GSEC and Treasury Silence. But the point is that these GSEC and Treasury Silence, they do uh, as well as the small saving uh, schemes, they do have a kind of higher effective uh, uh, interest payment rate. So there is the implications for the debt deficit issues. So if you see the effective rate of interest is something around 9.2% uh, for, for 22, 23, uh, we, are, we are projecting it. Now, as an economy, we are we have around ninety percent. If you con consider both state and uh, union government, then about ninety percent uh, of GDP is in the debt position. So we have to pay interest for that amount. So we are focus. We we have estimated that around two uh, two hundred fifty eight lakh crores as the GDP number for twenty twenty three. So ninety percent of that is our current liabilities. So paying something around 6.92% as an interest rate. So we are paying a huge amount of uh, money for, for servicing our debt. So if we can reduce these debt positions, if we can reduce the fiscal number, what basically means the fiscal consolidation part, then this money can be diverted to the uh, development activities. I think that's that's why that's why we need to understand the kind of uh, fiscal numbers here, basically the deficit numbers. So, what's the story on on consolidation part? It, what what we mean by consolidation? We're trying to restrict our, we're trying to reduce our borrowings, and we're trying to reduce our debt part. So that's basically the fiscal consolidation means. So we have seen that if we see here. We were in a right track uh, before pandemic. So it was around 4.59% uh, was our fiscal deficit. So we are in a right track, but because of pandemic, there is a kind of uh, fall in the private investment, uh, kind of then private consumption, export import all fell, fell down. So government has to come up with the more uh, expenditure side. So, Eventually, when your GDP number is going down and your expenditure is going up, so your gap, basically the deficit is going up. So to finance those things, we need we had to resort to borrow higher borrowing activities. And as a result of that, we are uh, we, we, we are uh, we are we are basically giving getting some higher number. But after 2021, 20, when the things came into some sort of normalcy, uh, we are again trying to come back to our fiscal con uh, consolidation part and where the government basically in budget 2023, they mentioned that they are trying to achieve something, some fiscal deficit uh, of something about 4.5% by 2026. So I think uh, if, if we are going to get some sort of higher GDP numbers, then that can be uh, uh, achievable in the coming days. 
uh, there's another important aspect uh, basically when we say about how to reduce our numbers especially in on borrowings we there's a lot of discussion on on interest rate uh, as i already told and also there is a kind of subsidy component uh, there is a huge number of money is going uh, for subsidized uh, in different sectors including the industry as well as agriculture and again there is a kind of uh, central sector schemes as well as central sponsored schemes we do had a lot of numbers then it was some it was reduced and now uh, I think uh, it has come down to, I think, 28 schemes. But there is more discussions is needed in rationalizing the CSS number because many programs, they uh, target some common goals, but they act in a different way or different through various ministries. So there is a kind of overlapping in the CSS programs. I think we need to focus on them. And by doing that, I think we can uh, reduce the borrowing numbers. However, it is important to... Uh, note that the policy won't be similar across the across the country because across the across the state because the need of the states are very different uh, if you see the kind kind of background or kind of uh, culture they to have uh, let's see what happening in the tax composition we are i'm not uh, discussing the tax proposals I'm just discussing the kind of revenue aspect. So if you see the size of tax revenue is very, very important. It, 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 it gives uh, the governments a kind of freedom to, uh, in terms of uh, more fiscal space for financing government activities. Uh, as I already mentioned, the government has targeted something around 11% nominal growth rate, but we have projected the uh, tax revenue, something, or sorry, revenue, uh, total, total revenue receives something around 8.5%. So it is very much achievable. In fact, our buoyancy of tax, what we have something around 0.9, which is very, very less. So it's a, a little bit conservative. So if this goes up, definitely we do have a kind of better situation in terms of total revenue receipt. But altogether, when you compare with the numbers in 2011-12, the tax GDP ratio was something around 14.15%. Uh, so if you see the numbers right now, what we have projected, it's something around 11%. It's very, very less number. If you compare the, some of the uh, emerging countries as well as some of the advanced countries, the tax GDP ratio, we, our numbers is very very less uh there has been i think in 2014 15 we have announced a kind of measures to reduce the corporate tax so i think that has led to a kind of reduction in the tax gdp ratio but uh thankfully uh, for the last few years we are giving a little bit of more uh, stress in generating more uh, tax revenue and we are, if you see the numbers we are in a kind of uh, right direction, but the pace is very, very slow. It's around 9.8% in 1920 to 10.7% in 2023. The pace is very, very slow. So in terms of, in terms of uh, tax proposals, uh, as I already mentioned in my first slide, that we are going to tax the digital uh, transaction, digital assets, um, uh, the kind of cryptocurrency and all those things we are uh, imposing something around 30 percent uh, tax and there's also a kind of one person uh, tds tax deduction at source when we are uh, transacting those digital assets so these are the kind of new avenues i think in coming days uh, we are going to have a kind of much better tax GDP ratio another high frequency number uh, indicators in terms of tax GDP ratio is the security transaction tax. If you see the kind of boom in the uh, stock market and the secondary market, I, there has been a record number collection in terms of security transaction tax. I think uh, this is uh, another uh, possible uh, sources to, 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 to enhance our tax GDP ratio. Uh, now let's come to the sectoral compositions basically how the government is allocating the money uh, under different sectors uh, general services economic services and social services 
if you see the uh, number this is basically a percentage of uh, allocation under the sector to the total expenditure so if you see the numbers uh, this is the compositional shift towards uh, general services if you see it was something around 39% in 2021 now we are projecting to have something around 43.4 percent if you see what is the culprit again the interest payment so in the total uh, general services about half of the money is going to going for debt servicing it's only for interest payment we are paying whatever money we are allocating under general services half of the money is going for uh, interest payment and if you see the number of interest payment it's very very interesting because as a percent of the gsdp so gdp interest payment is much much higher what we allocate to defense sector what we allocate to education what we allocate to health all together so if we succeed to reduce or in in the in the fiscal consolidation part then we will be able to uh, move or direct some finance, find some allocation towards the other sector. If you see the size of social sector, where basically we normally talk about uh, the social uh, social benefits, social security, the how to protect the vulnerable groups. So the social sector, if you if you see the number, it's very very less as compared to the other two, uh, segment. In uh, if you, I am not presented the numbers, but when you run through the uh, budget, then you will see there has been reduction in the allocation in health, housing, agriculture, rural development. So there's a kind of that they, they, they are basically uh, this is very disappointing because we need to focus more on those kind of uh, sectors. Then again, instead of that, what, that what we are looking, we are in getting a kind of increase in allocation in the uh, green sector, say for green energy, transport, communication, science and technology. So we are getting kind of more uh, allocation under this head. Let's see within the uh, social sector what we have for uh, education and uh, health in education. As we know that the pandemic pushed the students rely on the public institutions uh, towards secondary sources of imparting education, specifically on, 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 on the digital platform. But what we had, uh, the students were facing the poor connectivity, unavailability of devices, lack of curriculum linked educational content. In basically in regional language, we do have Baijus and others uh but they do provide the uh, content in english and hindi but if, when you uh, look for the regional content it's very very less and again what basically uh, uh my worry is that students part particularly in the rural areas they are facing almost a two-year learning gap from the formal education we do have this digital education through whatsapp and uh, the uh, technology uh but 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 we don't have enough evidence uh, on to, to what extent the benefit this kind of digital platform is going to give us as compared to the in-person in training um given the learning uh, environment in in which the online learning comes as an uh, alternatives uh, it does not really seem to be much effective when i see the people students when i uh, visited my own places so i i felt that it's not doing as much as what could have been realized in in person or maybe face-to-face -face interactions so in budget we have largely largely in, ignored this uh, this issues uh, because this is this issues and and, and these kind of uh, learning gaps would have a kind of impact on the lives of the students and so does the economy. And what governments, maybe since education, health, other state subject, maybe in the state's budget announcement, 
they are, are come. I am hoping that they, they will come up with something on remedial uh, measures to 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 address this learning gap. And yeah, I I, I think I think it is more uh, onto the states uh, how they are going to uh, adapt in this uh, environment. In terms of health. Uh, we have seen that this sector has been given a back seat. Uh, there has been a reduction in the total uh, allocation under health sector uh, last year and uh, was somewhat more because we do have a kind of COVID related demand for uh, allocation. But this year, uh, that uh, component has given a less emphasis. But when you see a kind of uh, scenario about the health system in India, COVID has really given us that opportunity or maybe what we can say that we have a learning about what we are, we stand in terms of providing our healthcare system. Now what we see in, in our budget, we have seen a kind of around 38% uh, reduction in, in um, total uh, health expenditure in uh, 2020 three it is something around 46 crores thousand crore instead of 74 uh, 75 crores in uh, 21 22 what we really need uh, a kind of large uh, uh, strengthening the uh, rural and urban primary health care uh, centers but this reduction in the health uh, allocation is a little bit disappointing we need to give more uh, emphasis uh, towards upgrading the health infrastructure and quality healthcare services. A number of rural and urban health and wellness centers that has to be up upgraded, that has to be established. We need more staff, more HR equipment and drug supplies. So instead of that what we are looking although we are getting a kind of little bit hike in in, in uh, capital investment under health section but this is not enough this is not enough another uh, what in, in a positive note what we have seen that the government has trying to uh, get a kind of national tele mental health programs because what we have experienced that after covid post covid uh, people are facing a lot of mental issues. So I think it's, it's, it is a kind of welcome move. Uh, what to me, what basically a kind of disappointment comes uh, as a trajectory, if you see the allocation under uh, defense, it jumps up by around 17,000 crore. But when you see the health sector, we have a kind of only 691 crores. So it's it's basically when you aggregate the all health spending across the department. If you uh, disaggregate and if you focus only on health sector uh, run by the health department, we are getting a cut. But when you see across the uh, ministries, across the department, there we are there we are getting an increment of six point uh, sorry six 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 ninety one cores which is very very less as compared to what we are paying uh, for 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 our defense service so that basically gives that an indicate or that basically gives an indication that where we are focusing okay. so this is what maybe maybe we are more uh, rely on relying on the states we have to see how states are responding to this uh, financing their health systems maybe when we see the uh, general government basically states plus uh, center numbers then maybe we are getting some kind of positive uh, uh, allocation under the overall health uh, health con system in terms of social security, where basically a much, much talk, much, much discussion in the news, in the uh, academia, in the among the intellectuals, we do have this NFHS 5 uh, survey where there are several indicators on nutrition, health, and poverty. What we are getting, it's not a kind of uh, 
encouraging our indicators on nutrition is alarming uh, in fact what i can say i was in madhya pradesh a uh, few months back i was working on a project so i was collecting some uh, data on anemia we well, no, we have a kind of nationwide anemia program when i go get this results so it is surprising to see that a lot of women are having the issue of anemia not only among the women but also among the children the small nutrition the other uh, indicators it's very very alarming that's why we need to focus more on on on, uh, on social security issue aspect but to uh, surprising to us what we have found that this budget basically uh, in in 2020 three the allocation under different social security for uh, programs that has been very less or maybe what we can say it's it's unchanged or it's it's mere increase if you see in terms of rural jobs uh, basically the manrega program there has been a consistent increase in the demand for uh, jobs in the rural areas because of distress uh, induced by the covid as well as the uh, reverse migration so in last two years emerging uh, there has been a kind of uh, increase in the allocations under monrega and it was successful to provide some sort of uh, gainful uh, jobs to rural people but this year what we are seeing a kind of 25% cut in the monrega allocations so such lower number will bring challenges in to to do the implementing agencies uh, because we are having a kind of high demand in in 21 22 and same thing is going to happen for next year also so uh, so i think i think uh, there i think we have missed something or maybe what uh, fmo saying that since this is a uh, demand driven program so when demand comes in in later states the central government may uh, uh, provide more allocation under um, manrega so i think uh, that all the budget has kept that option uh, open but what i really feel uh, about manrega even though you are giving more and more allocation under the program but how it is running how it is implementing at least at the grassroots level that that's basically a kind of alarming thing to my own uh, knowledge where because i have traveled so many states i have seen the kind of monitoring how it is happening uh, unlike in south where it is very very successful in providing jobs to the low, uh, real people but in our area it's very different if you see in my own village itself what i have seen uh, they are using more machines rather than using men so although we are giving some numbers in terms of generating uh, men men days but in reality those are actually not in men days because the money is not going to the hand of people although it is going to their accounts but those money is again withdrawn and it goes back to the contractor so that's the thing is happening so i think we need to focus more on more on implementation side also it's not about the allocation it's about the implementation how it's going on or how it's happening in the ground level another important there was a discussion i think uh, in the last year also to provide a uh, kind of similar program like manrega to the urban people but uh, this uh, budget has ignored it completely they are not uh, giving any number in anything on that and again uh, i think uh, another program what was uh, introduced uh, during covid times uh, i think pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana basically for the urban people uh, the budget is silent about that this time if you see yeah some of the uh, schemes such as uh, nsp then pm kisan nhm then pmay uh, then the pmgsy anganwadi then uh, our food assistance programs so these are basically the uh, vital program they are targeting uh, to provide protection to the vulnerable group if you see the other 
program nsap then the uh, nhn again then png as why well. we are getting some sort of incremental increase uh, in, the, in the allocation but as i already mentioned about manrega we are getting a 25 percent cut as well as in in, in uh, food security program we are getting a kind of 31 percent cut so when we had some discussion about providing universal basic income to protect the uh, vulnerable group so providing this sort of allocation is mayor uh, i need i think we need to we need to give a little more bit of more emphasis on on increasing the allocation under social security in specific and social sector as a whole if you see the pmgsy we are getting a huge increase but again the kind only only 10 to 15 percent of that allocation is going for generating the main power days others will go again for the other uh, materials and the uh, other machinery parts so i think the impact on job under uh, pmg also although it's very very high i think we'll soon think about providing some sort of jobs uh, like manrega to to a, in, in in a kind of uh, addressing the short term need so towards conclusion uh uh, towards conclusions, what I I could see from this budget that it, it it attempts to provide a kind of balance between the growth imperatives in the short term as well as our long term priorities in terms of HDI, then growth and other, and we are giving more emphasis on the capital expenditure front uh, towards SMD, achieving high growth along with uh, jobs because we in recent times there has been more discussion that we are receiving some sort of growth without jobless growth um what i really liked about the despite several upcoming state elections fm has avoided some sort of election oriented uh, populist budget measures and we do say that there has been expansion in the cities and cities has been viewed as the next engine to uh, growth but we see not very much discussions about the government efforts towards existing programs to build the kind of smart cities what we are already what we have seen that they are going to set up a high level uh, panels to 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 look into the urban policies and to what could be the reforms that we can uh, anticipate in the coming years and most importantly, salary class like us, a middle class, we have not get a kind of decent relief in terms of uh, reduction in tax or maybe a kind of deduction in the tax uh, aspect, which could have been help us uh, kind of fight the inflation and also a kind of boost the private uh, consumption. And, and the final statement from, from my side, uh, because many of the things uh, has been entrusted in terms of implementation in the state level so it is very much uh, important to see how they are going to react or how they are going to support the uh, allocation or support support the announcement made by the union governments so the impact of the budget on the economy will depend on the efficiency with which, which, which the various proposals are uh, implemented at the state level so I think uh, I can stop here and we can uh, have a kind of Q&A section here. And after that, I will uh, give a glimpse on the career options that are available to uh, in, in the public policy sphere. Yeah. OK, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hadoika. I hope uh, the participants will enjoy this amazing and very informative presentation on Union Budget 2022-23, a snapshot. So now we are having this questioning session. So we have uh, some questions in the chat box, and I am going to take up those questions. Uh, so the first questions, actually, you have also mentioned in your last part of your presentations. So this is asked by Devasis Sharma. Why was there no reduction in income tax for middle class people? So this is his question. Okay. 
So should I answer the right way or we, I, I can take up some more questions? Uh, yeah, you can take up uh, more questions also if you yeah, want. Then then I can another, another, yeah, 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 that you can do. So the next question is asked by Urmi Pal. And her question is, good afternoon, sir. My query is why Indian budget, I think it will be Indian government, is always made a budget for, yeah, deficit budget. So she is having some sort of queries regarding this deficit budget. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> OK, you will uh, that answer this later on anyway. So another question uh, to Dr. Hazarika uh, that, that, that is asked by Nazreen Akhtar. Uh, her question is, as we know, COVID-19 has reduced per capita income and increased unemployment throughout India, both in rural and urban areas. So in this situation, uh, Gov has cut Menega allocation by 25%. And her question is, what's your comment on this? Yeah. <clears throat> so, will you take more questions? Uh, we have more questions. Yeah, yeah, I can take, I can take, I can then combine. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Then another question. Uh, it is asked by Satanjit okay. Das. So, what is mean by telehealth center? So, his question is, what is mean by telehealth center? And another question, Zubeda uh, Begum. So her question is, why don't our budget focus on reducing the tax rate of education? As it is the second highest tax rate, that is 18%, is not it too much high for the poor people? Tax rate of education? Education, I don't uh, Anyway, so okay. means that education tax rate, any, anyway. So, so Zubeda Begum, I can also ask Zubeda Begum if you are attending. Uh, could yeah. you please again, yeah, rewrite your queries actually. Mm -hmm. Then I have uh, Subhadeep Sakraborty. Uh, so his query is as due to inflation, the value of money is decreasing constantly. But the income tax left are, yeah, answer. So he's also regarding that. Uh, question i think that in line with the devasi song asked so uh, income tax steps are unseen but we have seen cuts in the progress here mm -hmm. so another question uh, is post covid uh, means post covid the country has got many of its entrepreneurs from small large scale businesses so will it be good move for the ailment of unemployment in the country so this question is asked by Devan the Sakraborty. So what's your view on this? What's your view on this? Okay. So these are some of the questions. That, yeah. 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 Let's uh, respond one by one. The, on 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 the first question on no reduction in the income tax uh, for the middle class. As I already mentioned, that we are having a kind of issue. Uh, uh, challenge in terms of fiscal in, increased fiscal space. So we need more fiscal space, which basically comes from the revenue re receipts. So revenue receipts again, the income <clears throat> takes it's a kind of important uh, component in total revenue receipt. Now, when we see uh, when everybody we, everybody uh, from our class is uh, expecting a cut or in in income tax, but uh, what government is saying is that if you cut the income tax, then there is a kind of implications uh, in terms of uh, reduction in the total revenue receipts. And we already have seven uh, pay commissions uh, in 2016, and we are going to have uh, some sort of Another seven pay, another pay commission coming up, and then we are also giving some sort of DS for uh, addressing that inflation rate. So if we if you do a kind of deduction in the income tax, yes, obviously uh, it can work in both ways. Say for example, when we reduce the numbers tax rate, then maybe we can increase the number of people who are going to file it. That is one possibility that was done in last year budget. Uh, but why they are not changing this time? They are saying okay, we have already facing a kind of more stress. 
and we are giving tax concession in other parts, say for example, PLI and other uh, schemes. And we are also giving more emphasis on, on uh, basically uh, startup activities than uh, agro processing units. Now, if somebody comes into that sector, I think those will be from our uh, section only. So somebody from the middle class will be a kind of entrepreneur. They are going to set up an MSME. Somebody from the middle class, they are going to uh, start and startup activity. So I think in that way, they are getting a benefit. That's how uh, they are, the ministry is looking for. But at this moment, they are not uh, compromising the collection. They are because our deficit number is very, very high. Our, uh, our, our debt number is very, very high. If you do this, then again, there will be pressure on the, on the fiscal space. Then the second question on why deficit budgets see in, in in india we we have this kind of democracy system is here and we are not a kind of capitalist that we are looking for a kind of uh, uh, profit so we have to work for the welfare of the country welfare of the people and for that if we don't do this deficit budget then we, we we, we can't uh, finance. Say, for example, now what you see, although we are paying around, uh, what is the number for, a, a high number in interest payment, why we're paying for that? Because we have borrowed those numbers to finance the other activities. Now, if, you, we, if we stop borrowing that, we can't spend on your social sector, we can't spend on your salaries, we can't spend on your uh, different activities. So we can't do that as a welfare state. We have to support, we have to, we have to uh, invest, we have to expand on different activities. So that's how we are uh, having a deficit budget. And deficit budget is important. Defic we have to do a deficit budget uh, as a welfare state. That's the point. Third question, Manrega, I, I have already mentioned about this one, uh, why we're getting a cut. What government is saying that they have a kind of reservation in their revenue receipts. So as of now, they are allocating this number as things goes up and if if, if demand goes, uh, demands comes from the states that we need more uh, money, then in the coming time, coming period, the union government is going to uh, allocate more money on, on Manrega thing. Then the tele, what do you mean by telehealth center? See, um, I think everybody, I don't know whether you were well aware of, uh, there is a app, let me check in my mobile, yeah, uh, yeah, eSanjivani OPD is there. Mm -hmm. So it came uh, as a uh, uh, online platform, you can discuss your issues, uh, basically the health issues with the doctors, where you will be consulted with the uh, video conferencing and you will be given prescription and you can also take up the follow-up activities. Now, what this telehealth uh, center is basically a kind of online platform which are used specially for dealing with the mental health issues. As you know, people after having uh, COVID in post-COVID situation, I am also a kind of uh, having that kind of issues. I also uh, exposed to COVID in second uh, wave. So after that, I faced a lot of issues. Even I went to uh, AIMS for uh, several rounds of consultation with the, uh, uh, with, the, with the doctor. So they are government has recognized these issues and they are trying to establish some centers where people from any point or part of the country with the help of a device, maybe a, maybe a uh, could be a, a laptop or a mobile or a, uh, anything. So they, they will have access to talk to the doctors and they will get the consultation uh, as per requirement. So th that's how they are coming up. Then uh, the question of takes of education, I couldn't understand it. Uh, what do you mean by takes of education? Uh, maybe, maybe she can clarify that questions then the question on tax slip on income and corporate yeah so what basically saying why why there is no reduction in the income tax slip i already mentioned that one and another one is that 
when we were looking at uh, in improving the consumption expenditure, government is giving a lot of money under social security programs. They are also taking up so many measures. From that side, they are trying to boost the consumption activities. But corporate sector, there isn't, there isn't basically an intentional uh, reduction because if you hike the corporate tax, then there will be a, a disincentives towards investment, private investment. And if you see uh, the Indian conditions in the last uh, few years, there is a distress, the private investment is distressed. Even if you see the uh, last few, uh, I think two, three months, the FII in the stock market, they are withdrawing their money. So they are, they, they are withdrawing the money from our uh, country and they are investing in some other countries. So if we don't do that, then then then, then there will be implications for your private investment. That's why uh, they are having some sort of modesty in, in corporate taxations. Then MSME, yeah, MSME is a driver. Uh, if you see, we are trying to uh, keep because government is not going to uh, absorb all the uh, unemployed uh, issues so government will be able to fix a small part of them but it is the msme which are which are going to play a major role major role in in providing the jobs to the to the uh, country so the the government has taken this kind of activities, PLI schemes, then the incentive to start up, start ups, then again, uh, a reservation in that. Uh, yes. okay. So, so I think those are the measures that are taken up uh, for, uh, for, for, for boosting the MSME sector. And hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to uh, increase some more uh, gainful uh, employment in the country. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hadorika, for answering all the questions and for the uh, great presentations today on Union Budget 2021-22. So, uh, sorry to interrupt you, as because our uh, principal, sir, Dr. Divas Dev, he has joined recently. He was with, uh, with us from the very beginning of the program. So, uh, now, actually, may I request uh, Dr. Divas Dev, principal, GC uh, College, to uh, deliver a few words in today's occasion. Over yes, you, good afternoon. May yes. I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. So, uh, good afternoon and one warm welcome to uh, welcome all of you to this uh, national webinar on Union Budget 2022 and 2023. Actually, I am very much uh, sorry for uh, uh, late joining in the show because uh, we have another program today and it's coincide both the uh, 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 programs at a time. So I had to attend the first program that is innovative model exhibition in our college uh, uh, we are organizing this program for two days and uh, guests are also there and I had to attend them. So for this reason, I am really very much sorry for that. Uh, first of all, uh, I uh, actually I should uh, uh, welcome all of you uh, on this national webinar on Union Budget 2022-23 on that is the 12th February 2022, uh, this uh, webinar organized by the Department of Economics, Gurucharan College, and uh, Internal Quality Assurance Cell uh, of Gurucharan College, Silchar. Uh, I personally, and on my behalf and my uh, Gurucharan College, uh, thank uh, especially to our uh, guest speaker, the main person uh, behind this, this is national webinar, Dr. Bhobesh Hajarika, economist, National Institute of Public Finance and Policy, an autonomous research institute under the Ministry of Finance, New Delhi. This 
uh, 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 that is uh, the theme was a uh, is a very important uh, important topic and uh, the deliberation of dr bhavesh hajarika make us very much uh, enriched on uh, on the topic that is the um, union budget 2022 since this budget is placed in the parliament we have uh, came across the different aspects of this uh, budget what i believe it was a very hist historic budget giving impetus importance to the uh, uh, that is the economy uh, though we have faced a problem due to the covid-19 for the last two years still uh, our growth rate is expected to 9.26 and as we are from education sector and i have seen a good amount of hike in the budget of education sector where indian government has tried uh, has proposed to establish that is the digital university digitalization of uh, the uh, of the history the farmer side is very much look into the uh, uh, matter and other aspects uh, omens yachts are included in this budget so i believe it is a very uh, uh, promising budget and i believe uh, 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 in the days to come we will get the results and from my point of view it's a very important historic and very uh, uh, yacht and the women's friendly farmers friendly budget so for that reason i thank uh, the bhavesh uh, hajarika sir for giving us time and sparing his valuable time and uh, delivered a lecture uh, uh, by which all the participants especially students and the teacher and the scholars have enriched so um, i hope uh, in the days to come uh, bhavesh sir will help us will guide us will enrich us through his uh, expert uh, uh, opinion so uh, with this i uh, thank uh, uh, bhavesh sir bhavesh for uh, sparing for some time for our college for our students for our faculty members uh, and i believe in future you will help us a lot next i thank the department of economics headed by dr rumapal dr jitu shoikia dr ranavijay das then the other faculty members those who are very much closely associated with this program that is webinar make this program a grand success with this i once again thank all the uh, uh, persons or personalities associated with this program thank you very much bhavesh sir once again and thanks the economic department and all the participants for joining us and making the program again success thank you very much I am extremely privileged to be a part of this particular program, and I hope okay, in coming days I will be associated with the department. You know, we can work out something. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. So thank you, uh, thank you very much, our to our principal, sir, Dr. Vivas Dev, for his uh, encouraging uh, words in today's program. So actually, it has not been an easy transition for us as a whole the department within a very short period of time to prepare this uh, webinar. But your leadership and positive attitude have helped us to conduct the program in a successful way. So the thank you very much, sir, for your encouraging lectures. Thank now, you. may thank I invite? Uh, yeah. yeah. May I invite uh, our resource person, Dr. Hazorita, Hazorika, to proceed to the next session. <clears throat> Yeah, so I'll take only five to ten minutes to maybe less okay. of that. Uh, I just try to give some sort of uh, glimpse uh, where the students can be better placed in terms of uh, public policy uh, uh, career options. So uh, 
first of all what i ask the students to use the technology to be better informed so even when when i was uh, in kharagpur and we used technology in a very different way we gave more time to entertainment rather than the learning or maybe a better inform so i asked i request students to give more time to 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 access the information in terms so, yeah, of it's a great time and and you should explore kind of uh, different different kind of uh, free lecture free webinar then the youtube is there so you can definitely take a better help from uh, from the uh, technology to 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 enrich your knowledge enrich your uh, understanding about any concepts and regarding uh, career options let's Uh, take a little step uh, behind what you can uh, start now basically those who are in the final semester what you can do you can apply for internship programs in several organizations say for so i i don't see a kind that internship culture in our state and when i was in guwahati also we didn't see that kind of culture ki you uh, have to go for a kind of two months or one month internship but when i came to delhi so they are we here we have seen that students from uh, uh, ugs and pg after pg they have to it's it's basically man, mandatory when they are in uh, masters they have to do some sort of internship and for uh ug also many uh, students from the final uh, semester they do apply for internship and they get a kind of exposure in various organizations in our organization also we host a lot of uh, internship in everywhere around uh, 30 40 internship we provide and not only as the government organization say for example niti ayog then the other ministries they are also uh, providing internship programs some of them are paid some of them are unpaid so you can choose accordingly uh, but i think you should explore this idea to do a kind of internship because it will give you a kind of more exposure more understanding how the next job market is where you can be better fitted and how you can uh, set your goal in 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 the coming days or what kind of course you should uh, take or where where you should uh, and in where you should uh, develop your interesting so i think it's very very important to improve this color rather start this culture of internship uh, i think uh, uh, maybe guru sir and colleagues can start up with uh, because in 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 they are also in sbi rbi so they are also taking some sort of uh, internship so i think that thing can be explored by the department or maybe setting up a small uh, uh, placement cell in the uh, college itself to to uh, place students for internship in various organizations in delhi basically along with us there are several organizations uh, in academia they provide internship opportunity uh, we in nipf i think for covid uh, because of covid in last two years we are not uh, doing that much in physical but we were doing some sort of uh, online uh, internship uh, in last two years uh, before that what we we used to pay uh, around 7000 uh, per month to the intern as well as we also provided uh, boarding uh, facilities here lodging facilities sorry uh, accommodation facilities in nipf itself like us there are ncar there are iez there are other uh, several organization are there in academia they provide internship as well as there are so many ngos are there which are uh, providing the uh, internship program uh, i think that can be explored at industry uh, i don't know whether you have heard about uh, deloitte then kpmg then arnest and young so those private companies private organizations they are into uh, public policy research uh, sphere so you can also apply for internship program in those uh, uh, companies so where you will get some sort of uh, uh, 
stipend as well as a certificate which will help you uh, in your uh, next uh, uh, job setting uh, aspect so apart from that what i largely uh, encourage students to take up some sort of online free learning courses uh, provided by various organizations various institutions uh, even even you can use the youtube platform to uh, see what the uh, course or what the kind of curriculum that are provided or that are taught in in other organization in other uh, uh, institutions you can also access the mit's then oxford harvard so they are also uh, have several channels in their uh, website even in youtube also they do have channels so their links are uploaded in there so you can also look into all those still all those uh, aspects and there are when we when we take up our uh, undergrad in assam we always look into the jobs in schools as a teaching or maybe in college university and we also look into the banking sector as our potential uh, engagement but there's a lot more than that is available in the in 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 in, in the uh, job market when i was in the guwahati i always think that this is the only space i might be a college professor so that is the final thing that was in my mind and then sometime later it was also come okay, i can also go to banking and apart from that, nothing was coming to my mind now what after coming to delhi there's a lot of opportunities are there you can go to academia you can go to industry if you see under me are around 5 10 intern they work uh, they had to work with me and they are placed in different organization now and premier organizations last year uh, three of uh, girls they were working with me now one is in with nca here she is uh, doing a kind of RA there one is with unesco she is based in delhi she is earning something around uh, 1.1 lakhs per month then another girl she went to kpmc she is again getting some uh, handful salary i think around 18 lakhs per annum then another girl uh, what she, she was working with me and now she is in american express that credit card organizations uh, are issuing authorities so she is again getting something around 14 lakhs so not only those there's so many they they first explore the uh, internship program and then within that period maybe two, one month two months three months they are able to uh, able to build a network and they come closer to so many professors so many industry peoples and they do build that uh, network which they basically helps them in the placement i think that that can be explored uh, also there are so many certificate programs say for example uh, one of my colleagues uh, her brother basically he did a certificate course on insurance and based on the certificate there's many levels level one level two level three of those courses and as part the uh, course level they will be placed in various organizations various uh, credit trading agencies various organizations uh, various companies they are looking for those kind of uh, people who are specialized in some sort of uh, area so there's a lot of employment opportunities out there so i think you've used the now you do have a mobile phone you have a very good internet connection you explore those things and you always try to track the niti io they do have a uh, kind of pace on, on on employment so engage with niti so you look into that there is so many opportunities coming as interns for internship as well as uh, ra research uh, consultant on all, all those things and also the ministries the central every ministries they, uh, pub, they, they they need interns they need uh, consultant they need research associate so you try to track those uh, ministries and you try applying those things uh, uh, maybe once you are getting into that kind of position then you can again explore the other possibilities 
because here if you come to Delhi, I have seen the people lot gets lot lot of opportunities. It's not that you came to Delhi for one job and then you came back you go back to your own place. It never happens like that. And what I really uh, look for you as a students to use the technology. You try to go for higher studies. Even when we were in your uh, age, we didn't get that much exposure. We have uh, not that kind of uh, information available with us. Now you do have those kind of information. You can apply for uh, PhD program or master's program in abroad. You can appear for TOEFL, GRE and other things, which basically helps you to get a seat in the foreign university. So uh, those kind of things you should uh, prepare. I think uh, uh, I heard, uh, I think Devabrata Khanik or he is principal of, I forgot which college, his, his son basically, his son uh, got admission in, I think in MIT or Yale for, uh, for, for her, uh, I think BSc in physics. So, so I think you should explore those, kind of, you should use technology in that way. You, you, you gather the information, you try to learn those things and you uh, apply those uh, things into your life. It's not that you should, obviously entertainment is very, very important, but it should not be because what I see in, when I visit my place, uh, when, when I see that students, they use uh, YouTube and Facebook and others, uh, mostly for entertainment purposes. But there's a lot more in Facebook itself. There's a lot more things available which will help you in, in, in building your careers. In YouTube, even if you are um, unable to understand any concept in your class, you, you just try type it in YouTube and there's so many videos are coming up then you can easily uh, get the concept clear in, in YouTube also. So you then you no need to bother your uh, uh, Faculty say, sorry, I don't understand. You can can you please level that? So it's not. So you can directly go to YouTube and you can understand those things. So I think uh, uh, that's the main point. You use those technology to gather the information. You try exploring things. You try exploring the possibilities for your next uh, horizon. You try to use these things to get a kind of better place, better positions. Okay, so. I think uh, uh, that's what I can comment on. And I wish you all a very successful life in coming uh, years. And anything you need help in terms of guidance and um, mentorship, you can directly wrote to uh, my email. I'll definitely respond. And anything is uh, possible from my side, then I'll be very happy to help you all guys. Thank you again uh, to Dr. Bhave Sadarika for uh, providing that uh, very important information regarding the career opportunities available in front of the students who are pursuing higher education in different fields and in different uh, institutions. Now it's time for offering the vote of thanks and it's my privilege to take the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks in today's occasion. So I, on behalf of the Department of Economics, uh, first, convey my deep regards and uh, hearty thanks to our principal, Dr. Uh, Vivas Dev. In spite of his busy schedule, uh, he has uh, spent his uh, valuable time to grace these occasions uh, with his presence. Secondly, I wish to uh, express my sincere thanks to our uh, resource persons, uh, speaker of today's uh, webinar, Dr. Bhobesh Hadorika for giving his consent uh, for this uh, webinar and for his today's deliberations on Union Budget uh, 2022. So we are greatly encouraged, sir, by your gracious presence and deliberations on different dimensions of this Union Budget. Uh, sir, we are also grateful for the time and effort that uh, you took to share thoughts and experiences on the latest Union Budget uh, with us. Thank you, sir, once again. So I would like to express my great uh, gratitude to all the esteemed faculty members and the students uh, from different colleges, universities, as well as from other institutions for their 
active participations and contributions to make the webinar as a successful one. Last but not the least, I must thank the organizing team of this webinar, especially Dr. Devasis Sorma, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, uh, Gurusan College, for working hard to for, uh, for past few days to make the webinar a successful one. So thank you once again to everyone. And, and, and with this, I declare the end of this today's webinar on Union Budget. We hope we have learned a year that participants have learned and enjoyed from the today's presentation. Thank you all.